Welcome. It's Files and Sons Day. We've got the new codex and we've got loads to talk about, especially the Cabal rituals and the cults. I'm James. I'm Ben. And I'm Cameron. guys how we doing good thank you good 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 yeah same you yeah right. i'm all right i'm all right what do you make of the book it's beautiful <laughs> yeah happy with it cam very happy what do you make of the book ben oh, I, I love it me it's definitely like such an a buff from the last it's such an improvement from the last book yeah because i remember getting the last book in eighth edition i was kind of a bit disappointed with it um but with this one like it's, yeah, it's definitely an improvement what units straight away are jumping out here that you want to get and and having an army do you think with, with me rubrics i want rubrics i want sorcerers yeah <laughs> like, i think sorcerers and magnus is almost a auto take yeah. yeah i i do think zangors have been hit a little bit in this book i still think they're good i just think that before they were a kind of an auto take, especially yeah. for your troops. And Zangos themselves have gone down the weapon skill to four. And I'd still like Alightened. I think they look really good. Yeah. Um, they're still cheap, those Zangos, the troop squads. I think they're seven points a model still. So yeah. it's still like that. There's still a reason to take them because just because just they're cheap. And there's also that. Um, <laughs> What else was there? Uh, so the Zangors now, if you want to take a squad of Zangors, oh, yeah. there's a new rule where you have to take a squad of Rubrics in your troop slots or a squad of Terminators if you want to take one squad of Cultists or one squad of Zangors. So for every type of Zangor or Cultist that you take, you've got to back that up with at least one Terminator yeah. or Rubric squad. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Law-wise, makes a lot of sense because Thousand Sons kind of are a small knit legion where they've got like very specialized units yeah and they take cultists or zangos zangos are part of their the the world of sorcery aren't they yeah 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 Yeah. so they've kind of adopted them and you know they're not they're not like i don't think you'd you'd ever get a pure zangor army no no in the law so makes sense is that just uh, just to soak up bullets really yeah bit of cannon fodder Yeah. yeah we have nine cults and these are these are from the Psychic Awakening book yeah. that came out, um, was it last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. last year. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it's been that long. <laughs> they've kind of been slightly, you know, edited. Yeah, yeah, to refl- you know, to be with in, yeah. in, in line with Ninth Edition. What's really cool with this book is at the front, um, they have all the different cults and they have a colour scheme yeah, for cool. each cult. Yeah. And I think that looks really cool. There's some really interesting colour schemes for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go over our favourite cults each. I'm going to start with you, Ben. Do you Ooh. want to talk about your cult of choice? My cult, yeah. I like the cult of prophecy because it's just... The rules just seem very fluffy for them. Like the um, the psychic powers they all get. Um, if you use one, you get a single... Um, let's have a look, see. You roll a d6 and you put it to one side. And at any point when you make a... A single hit roll, wound roll, advance roll, charge roll, psychic test, or deny the witch test, or morale test, uh, for any cult of prophecy unit, that dice you rolled and put to one side can be swapped for one of the dice rolls you did. So that's pretty sick. The warlord trait, I love as well. It pretty much, once per turn, when the warlord's selected as a target of a charge, before the before the charge roll is made, but after firing Overwatch, it can make a normal move of up to six inches. So you can just like, you know, when someone it's like, I oh know, I saw this coming. And just run. Moves away. <laughs> yeah, it just moves away. And then uh, the last thing is is the relic that you can take for it. Um, any like, you select one core or character within six inches of the bearer. And each time that unit is selected to shoot, can we roll one hit roll, one rune roll and one damage roll when resolving their attacks. That's so pretty it's, they seem pretty fluffy and pretty strong as well to me, in my opinion anyway. So that's why I think I'll, I love the Cult of Prophecy. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, I think the keeping the one dice to a side is 
always going to be useful. Yeah. You know, you're never going to use that and think, oh, I wasted that. You know, it's always going to come into play at some point. Yeah. Um, and the movement, that's brilliant, isn't it? Because yeah. not only could you move out of charge range, but you could move behind cover. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, there's yeah. lots of ways to use that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty sick. <laughs> what about you, Cam? Uh, I quite like the cult of scheming. Um, now, I'm quite new to Files and Sons, so I don't really know much about law. But, you know, you can get, you can pick any stratagem and once per battle, um, you can use it and it reduces the cost to zero. Um, I think that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that sounds really strong. Um, I was thinking of using that along with the Coruscating Beam, because um, that's a free, free command point strategy oh yeah yeah and you can only use that once per game anyway right so it's just a free yeah it sounds good you know free command point yeah. saved um also it grants all models within three inch of the warlord um gain the object objective secured ability okay so that could be useful for quite some yeah, tougher like your, units your tanks and stuff yeah, like yeah. Can just, yeah sit on the objective and not get bullied off it yeah <laughs> um and then there's also the shoot and charge after falling back. What? That's psychic yeah. power, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, so and every unit power, gets that, yeah. Um one friendly cult of scheme and core unit within twenty four inches until the end of the turn, it's eligible to shoot and declare a charge in a turn in which it fell back. That's pretty good that. That's yeah. so you like space you like ultramarines. Yeah. It's guaranteed it's only on one unit per turn, but still that helps a lot. It really does help. <laughs> yeah. Just looking today, Cult of Magic, I thought looked quite cool. Maybe not so competitive, but I just thought it looked like you could do some quite fun things. Um, so Psychic Power is, it can dish out mortal wounds. It's called Astral Blast. It dishes out mortal wounds. And then any unit within three inches of the unit that you've just done the mortal wounds on, they themselves then suffer one mortal wound. Now, I imagine that affects your own units, say, if they're locked in combat yeah. Uh, yeah. with a model around that. But if you've got a player where they've bulked a load of models together, then uh, you, you're also maybe just dishing out one mortal wound onto that as well. Yeah. Um, That's not bad, that, though. Yeah. And then the Warlord trait, you can use the Warlord trait to reroll Smite or that power I've just described, Astral. Oh, yeah. Blast. A witch oh, fire yeah. power yeah. with this Warlord. So that's that's pretty good. So like, and I, I'm pretty sure that overlaps. I'm sure it's not just pick one power. I'm I'm pretty sure it's both. You can you can select and they'll yeah once per fat second yeah. phase yeah. yeah. Um, and the relic. So if you select a model for a cabal ritual, within six inches of of this model with the relic, it costs less. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that like you, you're taking off. You know, cabal cabal rituals we'll get onto in a moment, but you, yeah, you can do a lot with those. Yeah. And I think that um, having an ability to just make it a bit cheaper on them so you can spend them on more is, is pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty sick. So I think that sounds more fun than heavily competitive, but at the same time, if, if you're building your Fowls and Sun army to be reliant on mortal wounds, there's yeah. a lot of tricks you can do yeah. you know, yeah. to make mortal wounds going off. I think the Cabal point's been odd the use of cabal points being cheaper is very good yeah because some of them are quite expensive definitely um they they all look good though the cults i, I think uh one we've not really talked about that I, I see get a lot of talk about is cult of time uh it's got some nice little powers where you, you can bring back a um, model yeah yeah a model in a unit and there's already a psychic power that heals a unit as well yeah, yeah. on top of that and the time flux doesn't count that the psychic power time flux for cult of time doesn't even count as healing doesn't yeah. say it counts as a heal. So um, I that's think that's, two models. Yeah. From Sorry. what I've read, that looks like one of the competitive cults, but I actually think they all look good. Yeah, like, they all look good. Think... They're all fluffy. I love the names of the powers of some of them. And the... Yeah. I think if you've got a certain way you want to play Files and Sons now, like you can pick a cult that will benefit that, which is great. Yeah. The Cabal Rituals look broken. <laughs> yeah. Some of them do, yeah. I say that. I mean... They're not broken. They just look really powerful, what you can do. So yeah. basically, uh, with the Cabal Rituals, if you just take a full army of Thousand Sons, so you don't have any detachments from any other yeah. ar uh, army type, so 
that would include Chaos Demons. So you, you can't get these if you were to play Fowls and Sons and Zinch Demons. Yeah. You've got to go pure Fowls and Sons here. Um, but for every psychic sort of uh, individual unit you've got, and that includes psychers from Rubric Marines and Terminators. Yeah. So the Sorcerers in their count is one for this. Yeah. Um, if you if you take you get a number chart so like Magnus counts as four Cabal points yeah yeah um, whereas Barry like Man's three yeah whereas like a, a standard sorcerer in a Rubik squad just counts as one um, at the start of your psychic phase you add up all these points and then you can spend them on certain rituals and they last for the whole of that turn so your next psychic phase and the next turn you start again from zero yeah. and then you add yeah, up what you you've got on the board. Again. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and I like that. So it kind of suggests to you that you want to spend these each turn yeah, to the max. Yeah, definitely want to spend them it, up. It yeah. slightly took from the Corn Demon King Codex where you had to kill oh, them. I thought that was a bad experience for you, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> it was. You don't want to talk about no. it. But it's like an improved version. <laughs> what are those blood points? I think so. Blood yeah. tithe points. So. Yeah. yeah. But this, I agree. This seems better. There's some really strong ones as well. Yeah, some of them cost a lot, but it's not, yeah. you're, not, you're laughing because you pulled units. Uh, yeah, gonna, you could easily be... get like 20 Cabal points a turn if you play it right, I think. Each one you can only use once as well in the phase. Yeah. But then obviously next psychic phase, you can use them all again. There's a load of little tricks that we're going to talk about later Yeah, where you can really kind of... Uh, hurt. Yeah, Put and, on the and, hurt. and <laughs> get, get like ways of getting more of these. Yeah. One Cabal ritual that I really like the look of is Cabalistic Focus. So it costs eight Cabal points. And use this Cabal ritual after a psychic test made for a unit from your army is passed. That psychic power or action cannot be denied. Yeah, that, so that's strong, strong, that. Yeah, that is strong. How, many, how much is that? Eight. So doing that just means that... Um, yeah, it's just really strong, isn't it? It means Doom Bolt's definitely going through. That's what yeah. it means. Yeah. Well, it depends who you're up against. If you're up, some, up someone who's not got psychers, then you don't yeah. need to use it and ever. But... A, a good one with it as well is, um, say you're you're playing against a model in your opponent's force that is just a really beat stick model, and it's got a good invulnerable save, and you're like, well, I can now charge that with one of my decent melee units. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even like an Exalted Sorcerer. Like with a good, um, you know, force weapons yeah. have got a bit better for it. They they can take their thousand sun type power sword now. The sorcerers, yeah, and it's plus one strength, two damage, it's, minus three. Yeah, it's, if it's you lethal. can, if you can get off, you kind of um, get rid of. I forget the psychic power now. It's basically the new death hex version. Yeah, if you get that off on an enemy model, get rid of their invulnerable save. Then yeah, yeah, any decent like. <clears throat> combat weapon you've got is going to hurt any kind of model i definitely think thousand sons with all the stuff they've got is they're going to be a hard counter to necrons because yeah. necrons can't reanimate from psychic phase yeah only shooting oh, i didn't know that only shooting and fighting and thinking about that as well like I, i'm just i'm just thinking like if you're playing space wolves for example oh yeah. mm. say say you've got ragnar running around ian trying to kill everything. Yeah, well. You could get that power off, use that ritual to deny um, them from trying to deny your ignore. Yeah, because Ian's going gonna, gonna to take a cycle against you. And then you charge, yeah. you charge your Terminators at Ragnar. Those Terminators are all strength five with their power swords. They would just eat Ragnar for breakfast. Yeah, they would. And just, even just not that, actually, you don't even need to charge in combat. You could just shoot him to death. The only, the only problem is Ragnar can slow a unit down, though, can't he? For... But you could just shoot him to death. Oh, yeah, you could just shoot bolters. him to death. Yeah, of course. Inferno bolters. Yeah. Nah, oh, my God. Pew, pew, characters yeah. are just going to like be like, oh, no. And the bush you can <laughs> give to your bolters now is just like... Yeah. Insane. Bunch of rubric marines. Um, there's, there's some good ones, though, isn't there? I mean, you, you've got Wrath of the... Oh, Imitarium, Wrath, yeah. Wrath of the Imitarium. It's yeah. nine Cabal points. Is that yeah. the one where you can, after you've successfully casted a power, you can cast it again with a different sorcerer? No. no. This oh. is, use the Cabalistic Ritual after taking a psychic test for a unit from your army. Add two to that psychic oh, test. Oh, okay. So you think about it now, and we'll, we'll talk about this in detail in a second because we haven't yet, but Thousand Sons 
army wide now get a plus one to their psychic yeah. tests. Yeah. You could make a HQ there have like an easy free plus to a psychic test. Yeah. Like that that's gonna go off. And what's good is you use that after you've done your psychic test. So you think, oh, if I just got two more off, Smite would be D six mortal wounds instead of three. D three. Yeah. You just use that and then Yeah, that's know. true. Mate, Smite's gonna be so easy for Thousand Sons, like on the Oh yeah. Higher, you could use that for future wounds. smites that'll already be minus one. Yeah. This is a good one as well. Like, if you're playing against someone who doesn't have anyone to deny your psychic powers, pack from beyond seven cabal points. Use this cabalistic ritual when attempted to manifest a psychic power. It is yeah. automatically passed at the lowest that's value. Yeah, so that's really good. That. Yeah. Um. Even the small point ones look good. Yeah. Um. There's one in there, and I can't remember which one it's called, but it's when you pass a power. Um, another sorcerer who's also got that power can cast it. Oh, right, yeah, because normally you can only cast one. Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. I think, I'm, I think that's it. Like, I, I couldn't find it in the page. Yeah. You know, and I'm in a rush. There's, there's this one as well, Kindred Sorcerers. We're not talking about that, have we? I don't think so. Which one's that? Um, so there's this one, Kindred Sorcerers. Um, after taking a psychic test for a unit from your army, you can add one to that test. Oh, yeah. So... If you don't want to spend a whole nine cabal points on the raf of the one I can't pronounce, <laughs> you can spend you can spend just five on kindred of sorcerers and just get a plus one. That's good. Um, so so that would just again like you know if you if you hit is it eleven you need for d six smite? I think so. Yeah. 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 So you get a ten. It's like well I can just spend five. Well on that. yeah. Um, and then again, you know, that one you mentioned, Cam Echoes from the Warp, isn't it? Where you can get that yeah, psychic get power that can give you an extra command point. Um, malevolent charge use this ritual um, if the psychic power inflicts mortal wounds on an enemy after inflicting the mortal wounds select one of those units and inflict D3 additional mortal wounds on that unit yeah, that one's cool. yeah. Um, what was the one you mentioned there was one about uh, if a sorcerer casts a power another sorcerer can cast the same power If I think they have to know it though I, can't, it's, I think it's quite a high point one. Yeah, Psychic Maelstrom. Oh, is that the one I'm thinking of? Yeah, Psychic Maelstrom looks strong where you can cast power already manifested. Warp Sight uses Cabal Ritual when a Psychic Power is successfully manifested. The power requires you to select a unit visible to the Psyker. For that manifestation, you can select a unit visible to any friendly unit with yeah, this good. ritual ability. I remember so, seeing that one. That's all yeah, pretty decent. That's only free as well. So yeah. if you really need a power to go off and you can't see the model, you want it to go off. You keep on. one like your most valuable safe whilst your other one just gets it off. Yeah. They they just make all of um all of the powers that you want to play very easy to go off. Yeah. Is the one where you can cast the same power, does what does that specifically say? What, the psychic maelstrom? Yeah just says if selected to manifest the power until the end of the phase, that unit can attempt to manifest one witch fire psychic power that another psycho in your army has already attempted to manifest during the phase. So it just means that if there's one well, of those... Already attempted. So you don't actually have, have to know it. Well, it means, it, just means... it means if you've got an exalted sorcerer that casts Doombolt, yeah. you could then cast it on Magnus as well. Yeah. but So you could cast Doombolt twice. But what I'm saying is... Magnus wouldn't have to have it down as one of his known powers. Well, Magnus actually knows all the powers. Yeah, but you can only select so many, can't you? Uh, uh, so it's not... I don't know if it's about... It has to be a Witchfire power. Yeah, so Doom Bolt's a Witchfire. And it fire. says attempted, so I don't know if, like... Well, technically, if it goes off, you, I, had, I you guess did it, attempt that. I guess it means as well, like, if, if you attempt it and it doesn't go off, you've got a second chance to attempt yeah. it. And the person doesn't actually have to know the power either. Yeah, that's what I mean, so... Right. You know, this a psychic could know Doom Ball and I don't know, another psychic power, but yeah. He could know them too. But using that, it could cast another one. That it's not down to Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um before we move on, I do want to talk about changes to the Brotherhood of Sorcerers rule. And that's the Thousand Sons basically chapter tactic. Oh yeah. So it used to be you had six inch range to their psychic powers yep boom and it's <laughs> changed now to you get plus one to psychic tests taken for your unit and Archeon a start is it Archeon or is it Archaea how do you pronounce that that's Arcana a... Arcana Arcana yeah that sounds about is right. It all right Arcana I'm not, I'm not looking at it myself so, so as well 
Astartes or Zangors gain a five plus invulnerable save. Yes. Which is pretty good. Now, I, I think when it says Astartes, doesn't that mean tanks as well? Yep, they all have a card yeah. that Astartes. So Land Raiders get a five plus. Yeah. Rhinos get a five plus. Yep. <laughs> That's insane. Do demon engines count for that? Do, no, all the well, they because they, all, anyway. they already have their own. Yeah. But it that's interesting though, because I looked at rubrics and they don't have their own generic invulnerable anymore. Right. So that tells me that rubrics, if they're in a cult, an undivided cult, that means they probably won't have a five plus invulnerable. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. That change of chapter tactic is really strong now. Yeah. Um and I mean, Grey Knights, they get plus one to their deny yeah. in their chapter tactic. And I think it's quite cool because it's a it's a nice parallel between yeah. the two. Yeah. yeah. You know, Sals Sal and Sons get a plus one to their tests, whereas Grey Knights, which are designed to be anti psychers in a way, I know that they're a really strong psychic unit, but they're, they're designed to banish yeah, demons, demons aren't they? and stuff, deny, yeah. deny so their influence and stuff. Getting that plus one to deny, I think, is very fluffy for them and yeah. a nice parallel to. Thousand Sons. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What I would say, like talking about the rituals and um, the chapter tactic, Thousand Sons are just going to dominate the psychic phase. Even more so now. Yeah, like so. Even against Eldar or Grey Knights, I just, I just think they'll struggle to stop them from doing what they want to do in the psychic phase. To the point where I think, when it is the psychic phase, Thousand Sons are just going to please themselves, and that'll make. I mean, they're not they're not like top tier in shooting and um, combat. No, no. But they have got so much going for them in those two phases. Yeah. That when you add in the psychic phase, it just means that whatever you want to do in that phase, you can you can combo it so that they will yeah. go off in the way you want it to. They are extremely reliant on their characters. That's yeah. That's one yeah, of the that's, faults. Yeah, that's but one of it's, it's still pretty good though. Yeah. I, I like the way they're gone. I mean, I play the eight, so I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. you, know okay. to, you know how to protect your characters. Yeah. <laughs> Any stratagems, combos with relics, wall of traits that you've come across that you like the look of? Just quickly. Oh, boy. Uh, well, I said before about um, getting that, getting a stratagem to cost zero and using that coruscating beam. Um, I think that's really good. You know, if you're against a, a hard army, yeah. you're going to get plenty of mortal wounds off but the only downside is you have to place i think you place one point in the command phase and yeah. then you place the second point in your second command phase yeah. but it's a good way to scare your opponent off an objective or something or yeah you, you can there's a lot of ways that you can use it i think it's like, a very strategic one yeah because you could put it in a way so that i mean if you put it in a certain point no matter where that unit if it's within a certain range of a unit there's and it's only within one unit. There's nowhere that unit can go to get out of range. But if you put it in the perfect spot and it's on an objective, that if this guy moves away from it, he won't be on it. Yeah, yeah. But he, he'll be off the objective. And that's it opens the, the door for you to move in. Or you can put it in between two units and it's like, he's stuck for choice, which unit do I try and save? Yeah, you can use it to separate any guards away from a character yeah, like yeah. Jaw did. Yeah. Um... Then the second one I looked at was the Risen Rubrique. Um, oh, the rubric. And that gets you, basically, in your deployment, you can set up a squad of unit uh, Rubric Marines anywhere that's nine inches away from your opponent. So, like, stealth suits so a bit. So good. Yeah. That would be so good um, on a Warp Flame or Rubric squad. Yeah. You know, Just all Warp Flames. Drop in and deal some nasty damage. The ones I liked was the Malefic Scroll. So, pretty much one CP. And it makes smite um, changes from D3 or D6. I don't know why you use it on a D6 one. You'd, you'd take the risk, really, wouldn't you, with a D6? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, but it makes it straight three mortal wounds, which is pretty powerful. I can't argue with that. And then the other one was Ensorcel, Ensorcel Infusion. And it's pretty much... Because I don't feel like vehicles would get used enough in Thousand Suns, especially in previous times. But now, I feel like... You should definitely be taking more vehicles with them because this this means one command point a vehicle within six inches of a character i think it is or well one of your sorcerers gets an extra ap on their weaponry so you've got like rhinos with minus three ap bolters or predators with uh, minus two ap heavy bolters and and 
an improved AMP on there, yeah. or the cannons as well. And a five plus invulnerable. And a five plus invulnerable <laughs> as well, yeah. So you're laughing. Yeah. I think rhinos for rubrics is really strong. Yeah, the top one. Even yeah. just taking like three predators, really strong. Like that five plus invulnerable. Like having three predators at the back, and it's like pew pew. You know, they're they're going to get off their shots, and they're hard to kill because of the five plus invulnerable. It's just insane. Yeah, there's many defensive tactics you can do. There's a psychic power. You can cast on a vehicle, increases their heavy weapons by six inches. So like it means that like could be a little bit further away in case you know if they think that six, extra six inches. Isn't there one as well where you can up their strength? Uh, only on warp flame. There's only on uh, warp flame. I think no. There's the infernal master. Don't there's. Is it? I'm sure there's a psychic power. There's a psychic power though. You can minus one the toughness. Uh, minus one the str- uh, of hit rolls targeting uh, a unit, and that can be used on vehicles. Yeah. I just want to talk about this stratagem. This is my favorite stratagem in the whole book. Vengeance for Prospero. They, I think they already oh, yeah. had this. I just I love, love, I love these fluffy stratagems. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when a thousand sons unit from your army is selected to fight until the end of the phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack against a space walls unit, you can reroll the hit roll and the wound roll. Yeah. I just really want to see that go off Very in a thousand nice. sons against Ian. Against Ian's <laughs> space walls because he'll rage. <laughs> you, know? you could just do the space so fluffy. rage. So um, fluffy. I think they get a decent like version of that I think they've got the, yeah. like, I don't know if it's as good as that though I, I think it's the same you know oh, okay I, really I just think it's cool Th- there's quite a lot of stratagems um, that I like the look of and there's a few that I'm going to save because they go in combination with the odd unit that I've picked yeah and, and we've picked in the top five yeah Um, I am going to talk a little bit about warlord traits now though um because you can make some really powerful hqs yeah in particular your sorcerers now yeah um yeah so the legion command abilities they've gained are really cool where you can basically upgrade uh, a sorcerer an exalted sorcerer or even the aspiring sorcerers in the um you know in your terminator squads or in the rubik squads yeah yeah and they're not a lot of points. They're, they're basically an equivalent of what's in the Space Ring Codex. Or the Necron Codex and yeah. all that stuff, yeah. Um, the one I like the look of is the first one for the Exalted Sorcerer, which costs 25 points. And this model can attempt to manifest one additional psychic power in your psychic face. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I think when you combine that with um, the Relic Athenian Scrolls, which has had a major upgrade... It, it used to be quite a weird. I think it was you could ignore doubles on your. Oh no! Perils. It's, it's when you just, when you cast a power and you rolled a double, the power couldn't be denied. Right. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it's changed now. You select a psychic power, and you roll an additional d6 when you're casting it. Oh, okay. You choose, and, don't you? Well, the yeah. worst dice you roll, you just discard. Um, but yeah, it has to be one power specifically. Yeah, picked. but then you you keep that ability for the rest of the battle. Yeah. So in your turn one, yeah, you have a power that you're like, do you know it? what? This is like even like Doombolt or or, or smite. like yeah, smite or, for that D6. Or, uh, it might have to be from a certain discipline actually, uh, which smite's not part of. Yeah. Either, either way, like uh, there is, I think there's a few powers that involve ca- casting. If you cast it at low no, level, it says here select one power from the Baronos from discipline of change or discipline of vengeance. Yeah. So, so smite's not in those disciplines. Uh, okay, yeah, but if you want to get off, you know, ignores invulnerables, or you, you want that, you know, um, oh, yeah. weaver of fates, you give yeah. every uh, unit a four plus. You, you like, I want that going off a yeah. lot. So yeah, as soon as like... you first cast that, you go right. That's my power. Yeah. The whole rest of the game, you've got an extra chance of getting it off. A power you do not want to never go off. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, and don't forget as well, this Exalted Sorcerer has already got an extra power as well. So it knows quite a few. And then you could give it the Warlord trait, uh, Arrogance of Aeons. Um, you can reroll your Deny the Witches. And also, um, I think it's... And also... If your army is a Cabal of Sorcerers, this Warlord can benefit from one additional ritual in each of your psychic yeah. phases. Oh my god. So your Warlord can benefit from two rituals. And combine it with 
that cult you picked, if he selected himself, um, I would ask, is that a warlord trait or a relic? That's a warlord trait. Oh, no, man, then. <laughs> but it just means that, you know, um, I mean, we, we talked about some of the, the heavy rituals. Yeah. And you can really you good. can you can give plus one to plus him two, yeah. for five points, say. And then you could go, Do you know what? I'm gonna make it so that you can't deny it now. Oh you're spending a lot of points just on war model. Yeah. On the rituals, but could definitely be worth it. You you could make a bit of a beat stick sorcerer there, I think. And and that's not even really touching the surfaces because there's so many relics in this book and you know, there's the battle sorcerer, isn't there now? Yeah. That's like ten points and you, you can make a sorcerer have weapon skill two and, and an That's extra decent. attack. Um, you could give it Sears Bane, which is a decent four sword where yeah. it's minus four AP, D3 damage, and against sorcerers, it's times two. Yeah, it's pretty sick. And it does like extra damage as well, D6 damage against sorcerers. Yeah. And then there's that plate that gives him a two plus save and yeah. half the attacks can only be allocated to him. Um there was a yeah. there was a little combo I just like fought off. There was a warlord trait that um, you'd have an exalted sorcerer not on a disc. You'd give him the plate. You'd, you'd give him the two relics for starters. You know the, the upgrade to give him two relics. Give him a two plus save and half the attacks um, given to him. It can only be allocated to him. Yep. And then the um, the warlord trait would be plus three inches to his move, and he always and he counts as flying as well. And, right. he can, and he can fall back and charge into combat. Yeah. And on top of that, you give him the um, chatter foul, which basically he selects one enemy model within three inches of of him, and you roll one d three, and he lowers their weapon skill. Yeah. So you've got like a kind of like a survivable melee guy. Right. That like it's hard to like shake off. Whether or not he's hurting himself is another question. You know, hurting them himself is another question. But he yeah. like he gets in there and he limits their attacks and he limits their ability to hurt him yeah, yeah. so like he's, a, he's good at holding him up and he can just cast powers while he's in combat with him I think I think combat's probably one of the most risky areas for yeah for Thousand, Thousand Sons, Sons yeah. now we're going to move on to top five this was actually quite hard the, we, we nailed down um, we put units we liked really. yeah we, we nailed down the top three quite quickly but four and five yeah, we're quite we're tricky. To, yeah, and, we like to load of stuff, didn't we? Um, we're not going to go into too much detail on honourable mentions, but we, we had quite a few. What First up was Araman, <coughs> because Araman is still really strong. I just don't think you want to take Araman and Magnus. I think you want to you want to take Araman, like an Araman-style army or a, or a Magnus-style army. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you could, but I just don't see the point. <laughs> like, I, I don't think it's necessary to take Araman and necessary. Magnus. <laughs> um, we also thought the sorcerer. This is something you 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 quite uh, yeah, liked. Uh, is uh, that go on, Ben? You you, you don't say, if you've got exalted sorcerers, you can take sorcerers without them taking a command slot, like HQ slot. And I felt like that kind of like mean meant like they would be almost an auto take just yeah. because they won't take up a slot. Yeah. You could you could potentially have six sorcerers by having three exalted sorcerers and three sorcerers in a battalion. That's mad. That's decent. Yeah, so that's a lot of yeah. And that's a lot of points as well. We yeah. also had tanks down because they they look really cool with the plus five and vulnerable. Like land raiders look a bit better oh, with the, some of the bonuses we, they get. Yeah, we, we, like I would have had the vehicles in the top five, but I realised there would be nothing without the characters supporting them. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, and as well, demon engines have got better because obviously. In the Death Guard bot, uh, in the Death Guard book, they had a boost, and that's exactly the same here. Well, I, I, but we didn't see what Forge Fiends and um, Mauler Fiends look like. They look, they look better. They're stronger. Extra attack. I've got to say, uh, the Heldrake was very yeah. unlucky not to make it into our top five, and I think the reason we didn't pick it is because it's not a Thousand Sun unit. You have. To you should be taking it's yeah. just a good unit to take in chaos space marines now yeah yeah and i think when they get their book next year like the heldrake's going to be up there in that book isn't it yeah probably yeah um because it can do against flies it can do four damage in combat which is mad oh yeah with the claws yeah um and vector striking as well so at number five 
I wasn't keen on this, but you really won me over, Ben, <laughs> is the Mutilith Vortex Beast. Yeah. Mm. Which has had a strange time in 40k. Oh, I hated it in age. It's a copy and paste Age of Sigwell model that is for Zinch, and they were like, Thousand Sons need something. When Death Guard got their release, they got loads of cool models, whereas got- Thousand Sons mainly got rubrics and terminators and then it was like over sigma yeah it was like (laughs) (laughs) yeah literally it was like oh we need to give them more so we'll give them zangors and oh they need a heavy so we'll give them this beast um the mutilith vortex beast in the previous book was pretty poor it had really random abilities and they were all a bit they either buffed what or they were, they were a bit weird. About? Like you could give, you could have a mutant left vortex beast back in eighth, giving your rubrics plus one strength. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what's not to love about that? Well, that's I really mean, cool. To, to be fair, you could, you, could, you could do that with your zangos, but I mean, like if you're taking rubrics, you're just like, yeah. what, how is this benefiting yeah, me? Not really. But it, it only has the option no of four powers now. It knows two. Yeah. So really, you'd only take two beasts. Yeah. Really, but still. So you could take two, and you could know all four. It's just dishing out more wounds. Yeah, it's dishing out more wounds, really. And it's quite tough. It's quite yeah. strong. I mean, all of the powers they they, they they don't boost your army anymore. They just do more. Wounds. It's just hurting. It's just it's just a might re- be something good to have. It's just on a world full of yeah. more wounds. It, it's just something good to have that's like. You know, I'm taking it to um, damage yeah. my opponent's heavy vehicles, you know, with mortal wounds, and um, I mean, it's it's a good it's a good heavy monster to have next yeah. to Magnus, and it, it also supports psychics with, with some yes. stratagems. There's a sub- stratagem in there. There's two, I think. That is, when you told me this one, I, I thought, whoa, that's actually really cool. You could use it to heal, basically. You could use this damaging monster just to heal. I think, like, let's have a look, see. So if a Psyker is within 12 inches of a friendly Vortex Beast um, and is selected to manifest powers, instead of manifesting a power, it can just heal D3 wounds. Yeah, so, oh, and, right. What's, so instead of psych- manifesting one Psychic power. So you could do it yeah. with Magnus, for example. She so thought, you know what, Magnus, you could deal, you could use with some yeah. you know, more wounds. Yeah. But, and there was another one, but I can't remember. Well, here we go. Um so that one model from the army within six inches of a vortex beast, um, that model generates generates um, D three extra cabal points. Yeah, that's so that, good. That's really so, good. That. So good. So you know, like, what, imagine if you next ma- Magnus. How many command points is that? D three. Oh no, sorry, no, not D three. Uh, one command point. That yeah, that's so really good, good, isn't it? It's like I need an, I need a few more cabal points. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if the guy like took yeah. out. Yeah. I think that alone is is why I would be tempted to take one. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I'd give it the most improved model in the book oh, from yeah. last edition. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not expecting armies to to have to take them, but no. I think if you if you want a support heavy monster, then yeah. it, it it provides that. It's more almost so now. it's almost on par with the foot with the Morlafine in a way, but yeah. Morlafine Devo hits harder in melee. Yeah. But I feel like for just a psychic army, it's probably more suited to them. Yeah. It yeah, just fits the mortal wound thing. <laughs> just mortal wounds, mortal wounds, mortal yeah. wounds. Okay, at number four, we've got the Infernal Master. Ooh. The Chaplain. Newbie. Yeah. <laughs> now, we, we spoke a lot about this last week, so we're not we're not going to go too heavy into it. Um, well, I say last week, last time out, talking about Thousand Sons. Um, it's got some really good prayer type abilities it yeah. can do the powers but, uh, it can cast psychic powers it can it can basically like on a free plus dish out mortal wounds or it can boost your army uh it's just it's just a good model it's a good all-rounder i think but my Look thing is though, I, I just don't understand it's wording of the packs i don't know if it casts one pack per turn or if it casts as many as it knows because it says it's worded a bit differently to a chap like the chaplains and stuff they say one power while it says a pact, so I don't. I, like, hopefully, someone who's listening to this podcast might, you know, work it out. It says and, a pact, or right? well, it might get, might get a FAQ just to answer as a question. Um, but either way, if it can cast what it can cast one of these, it's pretty good. And there's a stratagem that lets it be able to cast that. It costs that a mortal wound, but which is still pretty good. Uh, but if it can cast two, that's even better. But if someone's telling me that it can only cast one. Yeah, I think it'll be one. Yeah. Do one pact and do one psychic power. 
That, that seems more balanced, really, in my opinion. Brilliant. And at number three, we've got Rubric Marines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rubric Marines look really good now. And they, they nearly, for me, could have been at number two. Well, um, we were toyed between them and the, the, the yeah, Terminators. Originally, yeah, originally when we were chatting, we were saying, do you know what, the Terminators now look really good with their plus one yeah. um, and two damage swords. That looks strong. They've got more shots. You, yeah. can, you can give them stratagems to increase their shot by one. Yeah. yeah. Four um, shots. The reason we went for Rubik Marines over them was for two reasons. One, they're troops, so they get objectives secured. Yeah. Um, and secondly, their um, flame of Zinch. Oh yeah, the icon of oh, Zinch. Icon yeah, of icon of flame. That's it. Yeah. That used to be it could do an extra mortal wound on a six. I think it was somewhat yeah in the. It was a bit thing. weak. It was somewhat weird and chancy. That now just gives you an extra cabal point. Yeah. I think that's insanely. Good. Yeah, that's mint. That for ten points. I mean, that's an auto take, isn't it? Yeah. Um. So two command points. Two cabal points for a rubric squad yeah, for a rubric you know, if you squad. take three rubric squads in your troop choice is five guys take them bare bones yeah. just take, that take and two just take units those. that's an them. extra free yeah. and spend them four cabal points for an extra command point yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 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 you could you could cast that power as much as you wanted like so um good. so they, they look good at that and then not only that i think if you go for a five-man squad four warp flamers Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Some of the stratagems. Give give the sorcerer himself the the, the flamer pistol. Oh yeah. Give, give See, him, everyone's got a flamer. Yeah. Give him the psych. Give the sorcerer leader the psychic power for plus one strength to war yeah. flamers. Use yeah. the deep strike or the or even the infiltrate stratagem. Yeah. Get him up there, and then you've got and using well, it's going to be expensive both in points if you gave it ten man squad, but it's going to be it's going to be expensive in psychic powers and. Um, command points but it'll be scary yeah you've got auto hitting squad you've got if it's right I'm going to say it's a five man squad you've got basically uh, 4d6 strength 5 AP minus 2 flamers that you're going to get hit if you use the right stratagem we'll yeah. on twos on, on marines yeah um, with, yeah. with also another D, d6 shots that are strength 4 because it's, it's, it's pistol so it's basically 5d6 auto yeah, hitting yeah. shots uh, one hitting on threes, one wounded on threes, one wounded on twos. Um, you're laughing with that. Yeah, I, I really like that you can spend, you can use the stratagem to give them plus one strength from their flamers. So yeah. even the, the sorcerer has now got a strength four flamer. Yeah. The main one's a strength five. You can um, you can then spend two CP on Wrath of the Wronged, um, an infantry unit, and a start his infantry unit from your army selected to shoot. Till the end of that phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to the wound roll. Yep, so that's so lethal as hell. Their flamers are going to be wounding a lot of things. Yeah, that's scary. That. Yep. Um, You're laughing with that. Yeah, and you can deep strike him with and what flamers. What's worse is if it gets charged. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just overwatch. You've got auto hit and weapon <laughs> still. <laughs> <That's>... Just... <laughs> You know, yeah. you've got you get in, you, you overwatch. If there's stun models left and they charge it, it's just like, well, I'm going to overwatch, That's, and there you go, more flamer shots. Yeah, and suicide if you, that. If you go for just bolters, you know, you've got a slow and purposeful stratagem now. You, you've on rubrics, you get that slow and purposeful one, the oh, heavies, yeah. so you can move and shoot the improved soul reaper. Yeah, and then you can spend a CP to mean that you've moved them, but they've not bolt moved. Fire, yeah, yeah, haven't so you don't moved. suffer any. So you're at 24 inch range for every gun and your bolters are doing two. And then you could use Infernal Fusillade and another and on that rubric squad, you can make one additional attack with the range weapon. So suddenly your Inferno bolters are 24 inch range and they're doing three shots instead of two. Yeah. So and the the Soul Reapers can do five now, and that's doing I think it, I don't know if it's just one. Let me have a check. Yeah, a bolt weapon. So I, I think if I think the Soul Reaper counts as a bolt weapon, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't think it is. No, <sighs> I don't think it is. No. But either but way, still, it, it still helps with the wounding. Three shots with the bolt pistol, uh, with the bolt shots. Yeah. And five with the Reaper cannon. Yeah. On a squad of five guys. They're, they're very anti-infantry. Like, yeah. Really good anti-infantry. So I, I think rubrics just look really strong. I, I don't think you want to be getting them into combat. They've lost shock assault. 
but they gained an extra attack on their profile. Um, but for shooting, they're one of the best shooting troops in the game. In at number two is the Exalted Sorcerer. So we've spoke a little bit about some combos for these guys. Oh, yeah, they're just... But for a HQ choice, it's the best sorcerer in the game now. I mean, it gives real ones to Thousand Sun units around it. Yeah. Um, you can make it cast psychic powers like there's no tomorrow. And yeah. after Magnus, you know, it, unless this is why I think you don't want to take Araman with Magnus because you could take an exalted sorcerer. It's a bit cheaper. And it just like, it could kit it out to be different to Araman. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. use the upgrades on it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I just, I just think like the, the combos that we spoke about just makes it really powerful. Yeah. Really powerful. And it, it can be decent in combat. It's just a cool model. I think it's a very versatile model, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and the, there was a relic. I don't know if I spoke about it before, but I really like that relic. That it's a bolter that's 18 inches, and it's three shots, and it's strength five. Inferno bolter. Pistol. Oh, yeah, the pistol, yeah. It's so good. Pistol free. Yeah. Really strong. Um, Two damage. The pistol, like you said. It's a pistol-heavy bolter. Yeah. <laughs> so, number yeah. one. Number one, Magnus. Magnus yeah. the Red. Ob the obvious I think Magnus explains himself. He's so good. Absolute he, tank. He's he got, he got loads of buffs and he's gone down 15 yeah. points. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he got better and he got cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me, he, he's, he's got the Mortarian treatment where he can take four Warlord traits. He's, yeah, more he can take four, he can take three. He's oh, he can take three. three. Yeah. But, I mean, I think it's because he's benefited from his Legion trait humongously, so... Yeah, so he gets a natural two plus to psychic tests, and then he gets the chapter tactic, which gives him another plus one. Yeah. yeah. So at full wounds, he's got plus three. It, it was, it's mad because in eighth it was plus two at full health, plus one, then plus then the zero. Now it's plus if obviously in full thousand something, it's plus three, then plus two, and that's it. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. What I like as well is he has the wall trait where it's um, he takes a damage off. Incoming range fire. I like his we I like his melee weapon because um, w when he kill when he fights a unit, if he's hurt him, but the unit's not dead. Yeah, he does an additional D three mortal wounds, isn't it? Yeah, it's so good that. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I mean he's got a natural four plus invulnerable save. Um, it's just so uh, he knows every power if he's your warlord, yeah. which he pretty much has to be. Um, what's the other one you can and you can heal him with stratagems exactly like he's just and so, glamour of zinchim minus one to hit on him yeah you can lower the da lower the strength of weapons shooting again well you have to pick a, a specific unit yeah, but yeah. their weapons are minus one strength yeah you can have him on the board and, and not feel like he's a glass hammer yeah like he he, he feels like if, if your opponent's going to completely focus on him he's a um, war hammer yeah, he is. You, you feel like if your opponent's going to focus on him, he will kill him. But he's gonna he's gonna lose a lot of of points yeah. on the game objectives. He's he's a hard obstacle. Yeah. Uh, is he better than Mortarian? I'm not know, sure. More is still like pretty flexible with his melee and stuff. Yeah, perhaps in the comments you could let us know who you think's the best demon. Well, I, think, right now. I think does Morty have psychic? Yeah, he does, but not but, like Magnus. Magnus so, is like a psychic I king. Feel like, yes, Magnus knows all, all the powers there. You know, it's all eighteen powers. So I feel like he's slightly better than Morty because Morty has to get up close to really hurt. Magnus can get up close and hurt, but yeah, you can just keep, you can just you can just still keep psychic powers and yeah. still like well, something that you can use with Magnus is a psychic power called Swelled by the Warp, and that um, that's to use it on a friendly. A unit within 12 inches and they get plus two to the strength plus one attack and that's i'm good. pretty sure you can also use that for land raiders and all the rest of them yeah oh yeah the land raider hitting like hard in melee yeah <laughs> that'd be sick yeah there's some crazy things you can do or the yeah. mutilar vortex beast yeah or the vortex yeah. beast yeah forge fiend maul fiend all drakes them. yeah yeah i i Did mean i don't i don't think Fowls and Sons have had like a broken codex here. No. But they're re they're probably more powerful than they ever have been. It's took their strength and made it stronger. Yeah. And like just back on Magnus, I remember when he first came out, he was really broken. He was just really overpowered. And I, I borrowed your Magnus one game 
and he just destroyed the whole army I was playing against by himself. Whereas all the rubrics and the terminators just oh, got just, killed straight they were away. Just so poor in seventh because yeah. they couldn't Overwatch. That was like the main ki- killing blow yeah. for them, in my opinion. And then they they were good in eighth, more balanced. They didn't have any standout units, but they were decent. And I just think now they're the kings of the psychic phase. They'll be fun to play with. You can take some really cool combos. I love their sorcerers now. I just think their sor- sorcerers look so strong and powerful. From what I've from what I've seen, it plays into the law very well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And the even Zangor's more like the aggressive psychers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I, like Zangor's have taken a hit, but I, I still think they'll be fun to use and, and a good support unit to all your rubrics and terminators and i'm glad i didn't overly commit to him yeah. start painting like Good. batches of 40 and so it's <laughs> stupid yeah oh. anything anyone would like to add i'm definitely getting back into fountain sons after selling them to you <laughs> sold them but straight I'm, away i'm doing them the swapped i'm definitely going to do them the you know the red and gold scheme back in yeah, the because cool. cool. i like that color scheme yeah. I might have you get... seen the scheme that's in here for red and gold yeah. Oh, well, I, I'm going to do it the contrast method. Cause There's looks... some really cool schemes in this book, actually. Yeah. You, 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 you were like, I shown you the city colour scheme. Yeah, the light blue one. Yeah. yeah. I was very intrigued, but I've gone with something a bit different. Yeah. Something from my own mind. <laughs> good. From inside the mind of Cam. Good. Well, it's been great to have a good look at this codex. Yeah. Um, I think good it's fun. a solid codex. Um, we're going to talk about the Grey Knights Codex in the next book and I think it's a nice mirror to the... <laughs> I think it's a really nice mirror to this book um, I actually would say Thousand Songs look stronger in the psychic phase but Grey Knights look more like demon hunters like banishing yeah. and stopping stopping a good psychic army from yeah, doing I feel like they may the get the upper phase. hand yeah, I think it'd be a cool matchup. And I think, you know, you look at Fowls and Sons rival is the Space Wolves and they're the complete opposite of each other now. You know, if, if you're a Space Wolf player and you're taking Psyche units to combat the Psychers in Fowls and Sons, ha- just, just, just don't bother. Time, yeah. yeah. What a waste well, of time. But if you go combat heavy and go, I'm just going to try and like kill you in combat, then you, you're going to have a match there because Psy- like Fowls and Sons are good in combat, but like, you know, space rules are good in psychic phase. Yeah. They're, they're not strengths you play now. Well, I, I'm liking that from just from previous matches I've done with them when I played against Ian's Wolfen. It, they were hard to kill in the psychic phase. They just because of their five plus feel no pain. Now Wolfen have lost that. They've not gained any extra wounds. Their invulnerable's gone down. Yeah. And all that's the way Ian kicked them out. It's like they just, it's like Games Workshop looked at Ian Space Wolves and we're just like, you know what? We're not going to nerf Space Wolves. We're just going to nerf Ian Space Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now they've buffed the Thousand Sons to like fight Ian Space Wolves. Not Space Wolves, just Ian Space Wolves. Ian Space Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> you love it then, don't you? Yeah, I'm loving it. Okay. Well, it's been great to chat, guys. Yep. And I'll catch you it's on been, the next one. It's been nice. It's been great. See you later. See you Take later. Bye bye.